So when making a box, you want to know the dimension of the item that you want to put in that box. This is the candle that I intend on putting in my box. I'm going to stand it up on my craft mat and I'm laying it at zero and zero. Just taking a look at where it falls on my craft mat. It's four and a quarter and at the top four and a quarter as well. So you want to look at its widest point. So I have this handy tool. These are called calipers. The widest side is at the bottom. So I'm going to measure at the bottom. I'm just going to measure and it tells me that my base is approximately it's a little bit larger than four and a quarter and the height is more like 4.3 so I would round it up to four and three eighths so if I'm looking at the height on my mat I'm just laying it flat putting it on the vertical zero line and it's just past four and one quarter. If you don't have a craft mat or calipers, you can still measure the size of your object by laying it down on a piece of paper and draw around the perimeter of the largest part of your object and then put your object right against the edge of the page and put a line at the top. And then you just wanna grab your ruler, measure at the largest part. For this box, I'm going to make the diameter a little bit larger than four and a quarter so there's a tiny bit of play. My box is going to be square and it's going to be four and a half inches for the width and for the depth. So my height will be larger than 4.5 inches so I think I'm going to make the height of mine at 4.75. So this is how I create a box. I have two shapes on my mat. One of them is a triangle, the other one is a square and I am unlocking the proportions. Now what that means is I can change the width and the height of my rectangle independently. So one won't affect the other. The, the width of my box is four and a half and the height of my box is four and three quarters. So 4.75. So that would be the front of my box. So I also know that the side of my box because I'm dealing with a circle is going to be the same size as the front. So this is going to be the side. And then I need a bottom for my box. My bottom is a shape that's going to fit along the bottom of the front and then along the bottom of the side. The bottom of the side measures four and a half inches and the bottom of the front also measures four and a half inches. So I know I need a square that measures four and a half inches to create the bottom. Now on the side I want a flap that folds into the bottom so my side panel gets turned into a tab. I want to take a little tiny sliver off this each side of this square so that it folds in nicely. What I do is I take a triangle shape overlap my square shape just over one of the angles of my triangle and then I slice it and that leaves me with a nice right angle triangle. I'm going to duplicate this because I'm going to need this a few times while I'm making my box. So I know that the height of this is four and a half inches so I'm going to make my triangle four and a half inches. I want to make it just a little tiny sliver so I'm going to make it a quarter of an inch wide. So I'm just positioning it in. Thus, I want to slice this triangle right off the square. I'm going to select both line bottom, a line left, and then slice. So that just trims off a little bit off the edge of my square. Now I'm going to do that on the other side as well. I'm going to take my triangle again flip it horizontally and place it again in the little triangle at the bottom like so. I'm going to select both, align bottom, align right, and then slice. So there's half of my box. I like to reinforce the top of my box so I add a little flap to the top that I fold inside the box and it really helps with keeping the lid on and creating a solid box. So I'm just going to duplicate my front and I want it to be the same width as my front but I want the height to be just an inch. I'm just going to take little wedges off the edge and that will ensure that it folds nicely. I'm going to grab my right angle triangle again and duplicate it and I know that the height of my flap is an inch and I'm going to make it one eighth of an inch in width. I'm just going to flip it vertically and wedge it into that corner and that's where I'm going to want to snip that off. So I'm going to grab both, align top, align left and slice. Same triangle, I'm going to flip it horizontally and wedge it into the opposing corner, align top, align right 
and I'm going to snip it off there too. I don't need it anymore. So here we have my top flap. Because my side has the same dimensions, I'm just going to duplicate and add it to the side as well. So the front and the side together have a width of 9 inches. I want to cut this out of a piece of 12 inch cardstock. So I'm at the maximum size I can cut on my Cricut machine if I have a 12 inch piece of cardstock is 11 and a half inches. So I have to keep in mind that my pieces that I cut have to be smaller than 11 and a half inches. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate all of these pieces. But I'm going to need a tab on the side to adhere them. So I'm just going to grab this piece. I want it to be the same height as my side and my front. So I'm going to unlock the proportions and I'm going to change the width to 0.5 because I only want a half an inch tab to glue my pieces together. And again, I'm going to take my right angle triangle, flip it horizontally. So I'm going to unlock proportions, make it a height of 0.125, but I'm going to make it a width of 0.5. Put it at the bottom there so I'm taking a wedge off my tab, align bottom, align right, and slice. And then I'm going to grab this, flip vertically, and I'm going to take another wedge off by align top, align right, and slice. So I'm just going to get rid of these, I don't need them anymore. So there we have it, half of my box. So the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to weld all of these pieces together. So I want to make sure that I have them positioned precisely, exactly where I want them. This is the key because if you, if you try to eyeball this part, your box will not go together very well at all. So I'm positioning my first piece at five and two. Now I know that the width of my piece is 4.5 and I've positioned it at 5. So 5 plus 4.5 is 9.5 and it's going to be the same level as its neighbor, so 2. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the front. But what you can do is you can just sort of eyeball it, put into position, and then go up into the position. I know that it's at 5. Yes, it's supposed to be at 5. But it's also supposed to be at 3 here. So as you can see, by eyeballing it, you get it almost right. But you want to be very, very specific. So 9.5 and 3. All my measurements are quarters and half inches. So I know that in my placement, like for instance, this one, I see 1.986. I know that it should be a 2. And then putting them in position, they need to be exactly right. 3 quarters of an inch and 5. So I've taken the words out of the way. I'm just grabbing everything and welding. And if I click on it, I can see 9.5, 10.25. That's exactly the measurements they're supposed to be. So now I'm going to take my score line. I'm going to have score lines that are vertical, and I'm going to have score lines that are horizontal. So I'm just rotating 90 degrees. My first score line, I know that it's 4.5 twice. So 4.5, 4.5 is 9 inches. It's just at that flap where I'm folding this inwards. So it's at 5 and 3. And then I'm going to duplicate that. Now I have another score line to separate the front and the side of my box from the bottom of my box and it's going to be positioned at 5 and 7.75. So then I need my score lines between the two panels of my box and between the tabs. Because my box is 4 and 3 quarter inches tall, I just put 4.75 in the measurements, 9.5 and 3. I'm going to duplicate that. Fourteen and three. So I'm selecting everything and I've clicked on attach. So now all my score lines are attached. My back piece is exactly the same. So I'm just duplicating this. So now I've finished the base of my box. I want to make the lid. I know that my side piece is four and a half inches. But for my box lid to fit, it has to be slightly bigger. So I'm going to increase the lid to 4.625. So I've got a 4.625 square. Now again, the front and the side 
have the same measurement. So your lid is going to be 4.625 by 4.625. So I'm now making the flaps that fold down on the side of my box to create my lid. I want them one inch. So I'm going to take this piece, I, have, I need it on both sides of my lid, and I also need it on the top and the bottom, so I'm just duplicating it, rotating 90 degrees, and put them in position. So that's my lid. I also like to reinforce my box lid, so I'm going to create another piece here. But this piece is only going to be 0 0.875. So this piece is going to fold into the lid piece to create a nice sturdy lid. So I'm going to have this on all four sides as well. These are both going to fold down and create a 90 degree corner. So I'm going to need a tab here to adhere them together. So I know that my tab has to be an inch in width, but I also want it an inch in height. So here's my right angle triangle again, and I know that it has to be an inch high, and I'm going to make it an eighth of an inch, just to take off a little wedge. Now I'm going to flip it vertically, and so that's the wedge I want to take off. I'm going to select both shapes, align top, align left, and slice, and then do that for the other side as well. So I need four of those. I'm going to take my middle piece, I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to put it off to the side for now. I'm also going to take one of these side pieces and duplicate it, and I'm going to put it off to the side as well. So much like I did for this, the front and the back of my box, I'm going to position everything so that I can weld my box together. Okay, now that everything is nicely in position, I'm going to select everything and weld. I forgot a step that I would like to do, is I forgot to take a little tiny wedge off the edges here of my box. So, I'm going to take my right angle triangle yet again, and I know the height of that is 0 0.875, and the width is a quarter of an inch. And I'm flipping it vertically, so just to speed things up, I've put my two wedges in position, I've welded them together, and then I'm slicing them out. And I'm going to take this piece, flip it vertically, put it in position, and slice it out. So I'm going to grab this piece, rotate it 90 degrees, put it in position, Scrap pieces I don't need. And this is what I wanted to do. I just wanted to create a little wedge so that when these tuck in, they won't interfere with the flaps on the side of my box. I put the square to the side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it into a score, place it in the center of my shape, line, center, and attach. And then I have this rectangle. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to convert it to a score line. And I'm positioning my piece again so that it's on nice round numbers. I'm going to need two of these for each side of my lid. And then I'm going to need another two for the top and the bottom of my lid. So I'm just going to put those in position. So now that all my score lines are in position, I'm just going to select everything and attach. So that's my lid. This is a very basic box. You can embellish it in so many different ways.